You've entered the realm of Rooted Cosmic Souls story time. Welcome to the tales of Leaf and Lillian, the story of beginnings, a short journey by D.B. Vasquez. This is journey five and six. You can find a link to journeys one through four in the video description. Journey five. Magic lies in challenging what seems impossible. Carol Mosley Braun. Leaf stepped into the black and beautiful, energetic, swirly mass. A moment later, Mama Esther emanated, her energetic filaments arriving in a spiral of shimmering, wispy, purple bubbles, gradually reforming into her physical appearance. Leaf instantly realized it was not a tree trunk they had entered. They entered the root of a massive, mountainous tree. The root's threshold swiftly closed at her back. Leaf looked around. It was utterly and wholly dark. Her skin prickled with adoration and appreciation. The energy of the space, thick yet thin, filled Leaf from the inside out. Slowly, a tunnel actualized, and Leaf noticed a small yet rather deep alcove on her right. Mama Esther pulled Leaf's awareness to a small satchel, conch, mortar, and pestle. The three were hovering in the air, forming a triangle. Leaf noticed a nearby nook. Various elements showed glimpses of themselves, some floating and flittering, others stationary and stilted. The satchel, made of the softest material she had ever felt, sailed into Leaf's hands. These are gifts from beings that offer you a piece of their essence in homage to your journey, sweet Leaf, said Mama Esther. An intricately woven vine formed the satchel opening. Leaf pulled the vine in and looped it around her neck. It ceased floating and landed softly on her chest, nuzzling and caressing her skin. The conch excitedly bounced as she reached out to touch it gently. As the tips of her fingers grazed the outer shell, it released a low-pitched, horn-like sound. Leaf felt a cool ocean breeze run over her entire being. She looked around, unsure where to place it so that she could engage the third object. Just release her, querida. She will follow your energy as necessary, Mama Esther offered, feeling Leaf's question. Leaf released the conch. It breathed a long, low hum as it ever so deftly drifted up and sat precariously yet perfectly near her left shoulder. Leaf eyed the quite familiar third item. Mortar and pestle have been constant companions for cooking and conjuring most of her life. This particular set appeared to be ancient petrified wood that glistened a tad as it bobbed in the blackness of the alcove. Leaf reached out. With the mortar in one hand and the pestle in the other, she felt the soles of her feet instantly connect to everything around her. Although she could not see anything through the darkness outside the alcove, she could feel its everlasting energy running up from her feet through her entire skeleton and spine. Never before had she experienced such a forceful and peaceful grounding. It was as if her feet grew roots and tapped an expansive, engaging, and never-ending well, deep within which she felt aware, ardent, and accordant. Leaf released the mortar and pestle. They hung there, separated, and shook in a jerky motion. Pausing, I missed something, Leaf thought. She grabbed each and waited until the newness of the grounding became familiar again. She closed her eyes, intensely envisioned the color indigo, and waited. The mortar and pestle wiggled in her hands. Instead of releasing them like before, she cupped her hands, 
and let each perch and nestle in her palms. They warmed immediately, giving each of her palms a little nudge. She moved her palms closer together. When they were about three inches apart, the pestle rose, tapped eleven times around its mortar's rim, and rested inside. Together, the mortar and pestle rose, and similar to the conch, slowly danced to her other shoulder and hovered there. The other stationary items sat on invisible shelves and covered the walls of the alcove. As Leaf approached the items, their unknown blurry state gradually crystallized. Unfamiliar flowering plants, trees, and herbs floated in the air. She looked to Mama Esther, who said, Shall we begin, Granddaughter? The label Granddaughter was new. It seemed both out of place and perfectly fitting. Yes, Mama Esther, Leaf replied in deep reverence and anticipation. Barely audible, Mama Esther instructed, Your satchel, the conch, and the mortar and pestle will be filled. The items will engage you in an order they feel aligns with your spiritual and physical energy. You will take what you need. Will they tell me what they are and what they are for? Asked an eager leaf. No, that is not mine to tell. They will do that for themselves, said Mama Esther. Mama Esther turned to face the plants, herbs, and roots. She placed her palms together in clear deliberateness and respect and raised her hands to her mouth. As she kissed her thumbs, she bowed, said, in gratitude, and closed her eyes. Leaf could sense Mama Esther's energetic filaments were at rest and reverent. She did the same, except after bowing, she moved to the wall and raised her hands in an open palm. She stood there for a mere second, and the first item moved forward, laying itself in her hands. Leaf jumped ever so slightly as it touched her skin, unprepared for the words she heard and felt throughout her body. I am known as Laricii. My home was a laurel forest in a subtropical area that existed long ago. Your people used to call me Bay Laurel said the plant. Take five leaves from my stalk and hold them in your palm. Leaf did as Lorisii directed. Their intensely bright, deep green coloring turned slightly darker and brownish when they landed in her palm. Three leaves collectively rose and the other two did the same. Each grouping danced and swirled in the air. Open your satchel, symbiont, said Laricii. Leaf raised the satchel at her chest and opened the vined edge. The leaf swirled and whispered, I am yours, you are mine, we be. The grouping of three placed themselves deep within the satchel. The other two placed themselves in the conch, still floating just above her left shoulder. Mama Esther, in a sustained bow, moved toward a tall stalk with green leaves at its base and a dozen or so umbrella-like flowers blooming at its crown. She handed it to Leaf. I am known as Angelica Archangelica. Your people used to call me wild celery. Using your mouth, please take a section of my stalk, roots, leaves, and one flower. This is my offering to you. Leaf placed the bottom of the plant in her mouth. As her lips and teeth touched the roots, she was filled with a strong sense of safety and protection. With all three parts sequentially spit from her mouth and into her palm, Angelica Archangelica said, take my stalk to your lips and blow softly three times while holding your palm wide. Leaf put the stalk to her lips and released three short, steady breaths. The tree root within which they stood filled with a vibrational tone. Each teeth parted piece shimmered and glided into the air. 
pieces of Angelica, Archangelica's root swished and spun, eloquently placing themselves into the mortar. Together the roots and the mortar vibrated a sweet, musky, dirt-rich smell, filling the air within the small nook. Leaf opened the satchel as Angelica, Archangelica's remaining sections danced with jubilation. Leaf felt their essence throughout her whole body, and like a swan, they dove into her satchel, whispering, I am yours, you are mine, we be. Before she or Mama Esther motioned to the next, a vibrant yellow flower zigged and zagged toward them. Its energy reminded Leaf of their tribe's many canines, who would be beside themselves with excitement when their two legs came home from extended sojourns or fetching sacred water without them. Leaf smiled in response. The flower bounced over to her like a puppy growing into its big paws and said, I am known as Taraxicum. Some of your people used to call me Dandelion, while others of your lineage called me Lion's Tooth. Pick as many of my flowers and leaves as you like, keeping them together. Then hold a section of my roots to your forehead, tapping seven times there. When you are complete, hold me in your palms. I will do the rest. Leaf followed these directions precisely. She paused, palms raised. As she waited, she could feel a familiar but distant feeling. It reminded her of the old man who lived down by the riverbed. Filling with a warm sensation at her kidneys and liver, the flowers and leaves placed themselves into her conch, and the root pieces squeezed themselves into the partially open satchel resting on Leaf's breast. She then heard, I am yours, you are mine, we be. The word swam past her skin, kissing her essence and spread over her like seeds swirled by the wind, wrapped in an energetic blanket of impermanence, resilience, and adaptability. As Leaf looked up from the satchel, the next item luminously appeared. Its berries, a deep blue-black, hung off of bright red stems and nestled in between vibrant green leaves. It exuded strong matrilineal energy that Leaf could feel even before touching it. She moved near it and the berries jiggled once abruptly. Leaf stopped and thought for a moment. She closed her eyes and focused on the energy coming from the plant and then bowed in veneration. It then moved toward Leaf as she raised her eyes. I am known as Sambucus. Your people used to call me Sweet Elder. Harness the powerful spirit of your maternal ancestors. When we deem you ready, we will proceed. From her mind's eye, Leaf visualized being surrounded by Mama Lieja, Mama Esther, Mama Addy, and Mama Filomena. Behind them stood the too many to count energies of her family's legacy. As she did so, she glowed gold. The flowers of the sweet elder dislocated themselves from the berries and shaft and spun in the air, then nestled in a circle around her lumbar region. Filled with joy, tears ran down Leaf's face. Mix us with your tears, directed sweet elder. Leaf opened her palm. The leaves rose and planted themselves there. She gently rubbed them on both of her cheeks. The flowers, berries, and shaft then drifted up, spun counterclockwise five times, separating into two parts. One part up and into the conch, the other up and into the mortar, as they murmured, I am yours, you are mine, we be. Already moving toward her breasts, a small leafy shrub with violet-colored bell-shaped flowers drew near. I am known as Symphantum. Your people called me Knitbone. I would like to aid you in your current journey. Please take as many leaves as you feel you need. 
to feel us as a part of you. Leaf stared at the flowering shrub and began picking leaves. She felt a surge of connectedness at the plucking of the first leaf. She continued to pick, careful not to fall to greed. And when she got to the eleventh leaf, she felt fortified and satiated. Bowing her head and palm held out before her, they turned over and made their way into the mortar one by one. Each leaf purred its own word to offer. I am yours, you are mine. We be together as one. From behind Leaf, Mama Esther stepped forward and held out a water-filled coconut shell. Drink, granddaughter. Leaf sipped the water and felt it fill her insides head to toe. Without a thought, she susurrated, gracias, to the water, the coconut, and Mama Esther. A word she knew to be of the old language, the language of Mama Filomena, but a word she had never uttered until today. She motioned to hand the shell back and felt, I am ready to proceed. Mama Esther said, put the shell in your pocket. As she did so, her fingertips touched the nuts she had placed there at the end of her new moon sit. Leaf settled in again, eager to continue. She stepped forward ever so slightly, head bowed. A leafy plant with leaves evergreen on the top and white beneath, each ending in pointed tips and purplish stems came into view. I am known as Artemisia. Your people throughout your lineage called me Mugwort. I am here to guide your spirit and further open you to what your eyes cannot see, that which cannot be felt with your fingers, that which cannot be heard with your ears. Together we will elevate your other senses and sensitivity. Take two leaves, put them in your palm, ivory side up, then in your mouth. Chew them gently, but do not swallow, and expel them to your cupped hands. As Leaf plucked the leaves, she could feel her spirit lifting in response. Placing the leaves all at once in her mouth, she began to chew, her eyes closed. She was transported back to her body, sitting on that rock in the middle of the river. She watched herself serenely situated, bobbing in the wind and currents. Though Leaf's spirit was quenched, she could feel the thirst and hunger of her physical body. Remembering the coconut shell in her pocket, she withdrew it and filled it with river water. She induced her body to open her lips and draw life from the shell. She withdrew the nuts and placed them too in her body's mouth. In a sort of reiterated script, her river-sitting self, eyes still closed, susurrated, gracias, to the water, the coconut, the nuts, and to herself. Her spirit glowed full moon pearly white as she returned to the small alcove. Spitting out the leaves to her palm, the pile parted itself three ways, a section finding its home in the conch, in the mortar, and then into the satchel held open by Mama Esther. As Mama Esther let the satchel fall back to Leaf's chest, she smiled and said, You are doing very well, granddaughter. We are almost there. Leaf smiled back in acknowledgement. Leaf could smell something sweet in the air as her body was simultaneously filled with passion, desire, and the memory of lovers past, current, and yet to arrive. Five tiny pinkish red, tightly closed flower buds were swaying in the air, slowly dancing on the winds of Io. It made Leaf warm and swoon. The buds danced their way to her. We are known as Rosa. Some of your people called us by this name, and others used the name Rose. To your journey, we bring the magic of love and the power of healing. To align with us, fill your entire being with the essence 
of unconditional allowing. Manifest what you will and we will join you. Leaf closed her eyes and first thought about her love for her mothers, aunties, sisters, and cousins. She sat with that momentarily, hearing Mama Cora's unique throaty laugh and Titi Lillian's mischievous cackle. She then thought of her favorite secluded lavender field, a day's hike from her family's land. She felt the presence of different lovers who, as she explored the divine pleasures of her body, made the trek with her. Her body ached in an insatiable and delicious way. The deeper into the feeling she dove, the more the buds quivered and vibrated until each in divine ecstasy shook loose their petals. The trembling now loose petals flew and filled the entire alcove. Slowly they settled and found their way into the conch, the mortar, and lined up at her breasts. She nodded, breathing quite deeply, having to steady her quaking body and open the vine-lined satchel. As the petals disappeared into the receptacles, they moaned, I am yours, you are mine, be be. Leaf thought maybe, just maybe, she heard Mama Esther stifle a giggle. But she was too excited and tingly to truly take notice, offering only flushed cheeks and a shy smile. Leaf shifted as she felt something moving behind her. When she turned, her eyes beheld the most enchanting enormous butterflies and vibrant colored hummingbees, all swarming about in a loose and free circle. As she veered closer, she could see at the middle of this densely packed ring of flying creatures a hairy, moss-green leafed plant with five small, light blue petaled flowers. In the organized chaos of the dancing circle, the flowers of the plant jumped and jived to the tune generated by the flapping wings of the butterflies and the buzzing business of the bees. I am known as Verbena Hastada. Your people call me Tears of Isis. And then many moons later, Vervain. I am here to support and fortify all of my sister herbs and plants helping you on this journey. Speak to the butterflies and bees and they will convey to me our next steps. One of the few difficult things Leaf had inherited from Mama Addie was an intense physical and emotional response to bees. Butterflies were easy. They were one of her spirit guides, and she was already communicating with the butterflies in the circle. They signaled their exuberance for her trek thus far by fluttering vigorously, causing the dirt at her feet to begin to swirl. But what to do about the bees? Leaf knew she needed to release all fear in order to speak and be spoken to energetically. She closed her eyes and settled deeply into her mind's eye. The first color she noticed was a faint yellow as the buzzing sound of the bees, chaotic and unstable, relatively drowned out the sweet song coming from the flapping of the butterfly wings. Focus, Leaf, grow the yellow, she thought to herself. Leaf envisioned herself at Pyramid Peak, where the family held its full moon fire and water rituals, as she hummed, Rum, Rum, repeatedly in long, deep, full body breaths. The yellow brightened. The buzzing, though still seemingly chaotic, started to shift. She visualized a crystal passed down from Mama Lieja in one hand and her favorite tiger's eye stone in the other. A ten-petaled flower appeared before her inward eye. She had to become one with the flower petals. Leaf was familiar with this process. On her 120th galaxy cycle, with the help of Titi Lillian, she learned how to balance the energy sphere located below her heart and just above her lineage cord. She centered on the flower while growing the yellow from her brow. One by one, she released any remnants of spiritual ignorance, thirst, jealousy, treachery, shame, fear, disgust, delusion, 
foolishness and sadness that she may have had deep within after entering the tree's root. When the last petal disappeared into her, a yellow cloak bright as the sun enveloped her entire being. In the background, something called her in. She opened her eyes. Completely encircled in a whirlwind of root dirt, she absorbed its swirly essence and crooning refrain. The butterflies and bees were swarming in delight, channeling the verbena hastata. Yes, I feel it too, the plant said as it divided its leaves and flowers three waves. This time Leaf took the mortar from her shoulder and held it out, offered the conch seconds, and then opened her satchel. As the last remnants entered, Leaf heard the now familiar and ever so comforting, I am yours, you are mine, we be. At long last, there was only one flowering plant left floating in the air. Leaf approached it and it swooshed backward. Distracted by the excitement of meeting the final plant, she changed nothing and stepped forward again. The plant swooshed even further away from her. This time, she absolutely noticed because as it receded, the nook enlarged, creating space for the plant to ease away. She stood still and turned to Mama Esther, who said nothing. No help would be given here. She was to figure this one out on her own. Leaf sharpened her attention, took one long, deep inhale. As she exhaled, she said, I am attached to no outcome here. I seek harmony in this space. The plant bowed, motioning her forward. She took a small step. The plant remained. She took another step and the plant stood upright. A light shined at the top of the flowers while simultaneously she, so deeply in her body and spirit, could feel tingling at her fontanelle. She smiled and sensed what she needed. Leaf had been standing during this initiation and intuited that it was time to sit where she stood. And so she did. Legs crossed, palms up. She drew several deep breaths, filling her belly, chest, and lungs, and then releasing it till her stomach caved in. She did this until she not only saw a lotus in her mind's eye, but was unable to decipher where she ended and Lotus began. At that moment, the plant moved closer. She felt it say, yes, continue. Leaf breathed into and activated all seven of the energy centers she used to enter into the root to begin with. She visualized a strong connecting root from her feet to the center of the planet. She inhaled and raised her arms, inviting permeation of the divine light. As she exhaled, she lowered her arms and visualized the light, filling her with energy. She felt golden filaments expand and envelop her. She drew on her own green heart chakra energy of harmony, trust, lovingness, growth, and balance and offered it out through the divine light to uplift and cleanse any ancestor energy needing it. On the outer edge of her physical body, Leaf cultivated a light of webs and pushed into the root where she sat, the tree it grounded, the forest it lived in, the ocean that flowed beyond the forest, the sky that encircled it all, until the entire plant was cast in a shiny, violet divine light. The feeling was so immense, Leaf was not sure how much longer she could hold it. But at that moment, the plant placed itself in her seated and open-palmed hand. I am known as Achelia Molifolium. Some of your people know me as Plumahillo, and some know me as Yaro. My main purpose here is to offer a spiritual link between you and the one called Ophelia Giselle Abeni. I only activate for those who come to me in complete cosmic alignment. My magical attributes are at your service. The plumahillo rose and joggled a few flowers into the conch, 
into the mortar and then into her palm. The rest of the stem simply disappeared. As Leaf placed the flowers from her palm into her satchel, she felt her spirit vibrate. Soy todo tuyo. Eres mío. Estaremos en todas partes. Journey 6 Expand. You are not small. Your foremothers did not do what they did so you could occupy small. Malibo Sefori. Slowly Leaf stood. The satchel at her breast yawned and opened. Mama Esther appeared with an old cast iron tea kettle, a delicate slow mist wafting from its spout. Hold your conch, granddaughter. Grabbing the buoyant conch from her shoulder, Leaf held it in front of her. Mama Esther gently filled the conch with boiling water. As the water hit the conch and mixed with the herbs, plants, and roots, the ingredients swirled and sang a sweet, soft song Leaf had never heard. She asked Mama Esther, What song are they singing? Mama Esther smiled and said, I hear nothing, granddaughter. It is for only you to hear. Share with me if you feel so inclined. The same five lines repeated themselves again and again. Without realizing it, Leaf repeated the words aloud. You can look in the stars in search of the answers. Look for God and life on distant planets. Have your faith in the ever after while each of us holds inside the map to the labyrinth and heavens here on earth. What is earth, Mama Esther? asked Leaf. It is, in a way, here, where we are. It is the planet's name deeply entwined with your own, where some of your ancestors dwell, specifically those that opened the door to a new way of living, for many, they merely existed in physical form. It is where Mama Filomena's people took the first steps to embrace their energetic realities completely, wholly, and fully. If I remember correctly, what you just shared is part of a song that was a favorite long ago. Mama Esther paused for this to be internalized by Leaf and then said, it is time to drink the conch, granddaughter. Leaf lifted the tip of the conch to her lips, drinking the mysterious tonic within. Instantly, she was filled with songs, stories, and smells of distant memories, not her own, but definitely residing deep within her soul. Mama Esther turned and walked to the back of the alcove. When she rejoined Leaf, she held a small palm-sized cauldron. Take the mortar and pestle. Grind the ingredients as much as you feel so inclined. Leaf stirred, smashed, and pounded all the leaves, stalks, herbs, and flowers collected within her mortar. Pausing to give thanks, she then poured the mixture into the cauldron. A small ball of flame breathed at the cauldron's center. The mixture quickly ignited. It plumed a thick, swirly smoke intermittently turning brilliant red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and indigo. Leaf could hear drumming, and as the last of the smoke turned a dried sage white, it wrapped itself around her. Who is drumming, Mama Esther? Yes, we are well on our way. That is your people calling you in. Close your satchel and let's move on. Mama Esther replied. This concludes our current installment for the tales of Leaf and Lillian, the story of beginnings, journey five and six. Thank you for taking this journey with Leaf. Embraced and energized by the ancient plants of her lineage, Leaf proceeds to deepen her spiritual quest and vision. 
What next will be asked of Leaf as she seeks to conjure and commune a rooted and time-splitting connection with one of her most influential ancestors? Well, if you want to know, stay tuned for the final installment of Journey 7 through 9. Arriving once time gives its blessing. This is Rooted Cosmic Soul Story Time. Unfettered and infinite love and gratitude.